Hello everybody, my name is Jim Chapman and welcome to a monthly favourite. It occurs to me I haven't done one of these videos um, since April and I really like doing them. It's just me sharing stuff with you that I've been enjoying lately. So um, this is July's favourites. Let's begin. I'm going to start with something quite small and I think I've mentioned this before and they're actually fairly innocuous but have been pretty invaluable to me lately. These are earphones, they're by Jabra and they are called the... I think they're called the Elite Sport, but I'll put a link down below for you so you can see. Um, and, you know, these are just earphones that everyone has at the minute. You know, these wireless earphone things are knocking around everywhere. They are brilliant because they're really handy and you get a lot of the, the, the case that comes in stores, like I think two extra charges. And on a single charge, you get like 15 hours, but that's not that unique. Lots of them do this. What I do really like about these is that they are excellent to work out in. They measure your heart rate, but also come with an app that um, comes preset with a bunch of workouts in them or you can make your own workouts um, and it measures your fitness and gives you like kind of challenges to keep kind of working towards um, and I work out a lot however I need a personal trainer because otherwise I'm lame and I'll just sit on my own and stare into space and sort of cheat a bit and also I find that when I work out I do it in the morning and it's really cathartic for me um, but if I'm on my own, I tend to kind of repeat what I need to do in my head over and over again, which actually makes it much less enjoyable. So by having a personal trainer, or indeed these, which are basically a personal trainer inside your ear, um, it encourages me to keep going. And I just think they're so clever and so handy, but also really portable. Like I wear these on flights, I work in them, I work out in them, they're just kind of all-rounders. So I cannot fault them. They're not cheap, they're about 100 and I want to say they're 140 pounds. That could be wrong, but again, there's a link down there. So definitely an investment, but I, I would rebuy these. If I lost them, I would buy them again tomorrow. That's how much I like them. Sunglasses. It's been very sunny lately, so I thought I'd share with you the ones I really like. Now, I have a lot of sunglasses. Accessories seem to come through my PO box constantly. Um, these I love though. I reckon I've had these about six months. They are by a brand called Taylor Morris, um, and the I'm looking at it now, the name of these is Roll Right. Uh, and I actually have these in two colors. This is my favorite color. I'm not sure what you'd call it, maybe like a, um, a sort of a neutral frame with a bluey lens. Um, and I wear these, I get a lot of compliments on them, and I really like them. They're, they're quite, they're much bigger than I'd normally wear. I usually go quite delicate with sunglasses, but actually these are not huge. I think because they've got this sort of bar that goes across, they look a bit bigger, but they're actually not. Um, and yeah, I wear these a lot, really like them. Um, that's all I have to say. They don't make me look ugly, so I like them. Let's go a little detour and have some fashion-y things. This I love, however, it's boiling today, so I'm not gonna wear it for you. This is from um, Tommy Hilfiger, and I just think it's wicked. It's like, it reminds me of a, um, a fruit pastel lolly. <laughs> if you're in the UK, um, you'll know that you know, there's ice lollies, that like ice pole, but they're different colors. Um, and I just think it's a really lovely casual piece. It's kind of, kind of a lightweight knitwear, um, but it's quite bold. Super easy to wear though. Wear it with jeans and trainers and it's a wicked look. I actually have an Instagram I can put up on the screen somewhere. I went to a Tommy Hilfiger event um, and wore this. And jeans, white trainers, just really simple, really easy, but quite a, quite a look because although it's a simple, plain sweater, because it's bold, it does all the talking for you. Less is more, I think. Next up, I have these trousers. Now, these trousers actually represent an entire suit, but um, I didn't want to bring the whole suit with me because it would have got creased to hell. And I have an Instagram I can post on screen so you can see that. This is from um, Ralph Lauren. I went to uh, Wimbledon with them, and Wimbledon is one of the nicest events of the year. I absolutely love Wimbledon. It's so um, civilized. You drink pims all day and you just watch people play tennis and it's so lovely and everyone's in a good mood. Uh, and also super stylish. This is super lightweight linen. It's one of those things that will crease, so you have to look after it. Um, but I actually, I always know when I'm wearing a good outfit if on Instagram I get lots of my friends comment on it. And this is one of those posts where um, I um, had like, everyone I know going, great suit. So that's how I know. But again, for this time of year, it's like wearing nothing, but obviously wearing something very classy. I do have a few more fashion things to show you, but I feel like I'm gonna mix it up a bit and go a bit off schedule and show you these. I actually showed you these in April. These are boxing gloves, but it's more about what the gloves represent. Um, I have been doing a lot of boxing lately and I'm getting better. I'm still not great at it, but it's such good exercise. I'm learning to skip. 
very bad at skipping. And it turns out I bought the wrong kind of rope. I went on um, Amazon because my um, trainer told me to get a skipping rope. And I just went, that one will do. It turns out I got a speed rope, which is not for beginners. And it's made of um, wire. <laughs> so when you do it wrong, it basically whips you. And I was uh, learning to do it when I was on the holiday recently. And I, and I put it down and my, my wife went, oh my God, what happened to you? And my, my entire back and across my bum just had lines like all over, like I've been whipped. Um, but that's how you learn. <laughs> if you do it wrong, you get punished. Um, and also co-box. It's like Barry's boot camp where on Barry's boot camp, you have like a treadmill and a floor section and you're on a treadmill for, for some of the um, session and then you're on the uh, bench and you're lifting weights and stuff and you keep kind of swapping. Um, and co-box is the same sort of idea, but you've got like a boxing, um, a punch bag station where you're kind of giving combos to do. And on the other station, you're doing like, I don't know, squat jumps or ab work or press ups or something. And it's a really sweaty, dynamic workout. It's not far from where I live. I went the first thing this morning, you just drip and it wakes you up in the morning and it's good fun. Um, I have to do lots of like weightlifting as well. I can't just do the boxing because I'll, I have a fast metabolism, I have to eat a lot of food and I'll waste away, but it's really good conditioning and I am looking much better than ever before. Not just my arms, but also my, my abs and my core because there's so much twisting. Um, all of my kind of obliques are really coming out. So it's transforming the way I look, but also it makes me feel brilliant. So, um, you know, if you're looking for a new sport, I can really recommend boxing. Speaking of sports, the World Cup just happened and we did really well and I feel like the, you know, the England team did us proud. We didn't win, obviously we went out um, in the semis. We made it to the semis and I think we've restored faith in our team. It was like, I think it was 1990 the last time we got that far. And I remember being a kid and getting really excited for the World Cup and then it always being kind of lack, lack, lacklustre and disappointing. But this time round we had Gareth Southgate being a brilliant human being, not just a great coach, but also a brilliant human being. And I think in a time, I'm gonna get political here, but in a time when this country really needs to be brought together, he's an individual that stood for, you know, um, a new way of training the team and kind of, he was open and he was friendly and he looked after them and he, he didn't kind of rule with fear. He was very much respected. Um, and I, I think it, we, we, we did great and I'm so proud of, of, of the boys. I don't follow football the rest of the time, but the World Cup's on, I watch it, and we did brilliant. I do have a small confession to make, which is a burden I've been holding since we lost. I think we lost, and I think it was my fault. Um, on the day we were playing, I had decided that I needed an England t-shirt, and if I didn't get one, we would lose, and if we did lose, it'd be entirely my fault. I couldn't find one anywhere, and I ordered one online next day delivery for the game, didn't come. It doesn't arrive now actually, and now, and now I kind of can't shake the feeling that we lost because I didn't get my shirt in time. So, <laughs> sorry nation for making you lose the World Cup, but um, I just think that we did so great and I'm very proud and you know, it hasn't come home yet, but it will eventually. Next up, I have this to show you, which may surprise you because the observant ones among you will notice that I have a beard uh, and this is kind of shaving stuff here. This is from Marum & Co and it is just really, really, really beautiful. So obviously I have a beard, but I do shave. I kind of keep um, me, myself looking neat. So I shave along my edges here and uh, my neck here to keep a nice straight line. And also my neck, I, I grow facial hair down to about here and it's just kind of scruffy and messy. And if I let it get out of hand, it just looks gross. Um, so I do shave. Um, and I used to shave with a double-edged safety razor, which is one of these here. And when I moved house, I lost it. And because I get sent razors all the time from my peer box, I never bothered replacing it because it seemed like a bit of a waste. However, there is something really lovely about taking the time um, and having a luxury shave. I think so often guys do it because it's a necessity and you have to. Uh, and we just kind of run through and we use a, a razor that's got like 17 blades on it, which actually doesn't make any difference, if I'm honest. Um, and you know, we kind of in a rush and we don't make the most of it, but there's something special about taking the time to do it properly. So I have this really stunning um, safety razor here. Basically you unscrew the top like that and then you pull this off and then your blade goes in there. Now, and also what's really good is that these blades are like 25p each. So it is a cheaper way of shaving overall. Um, and I feel like much closer. 
So that's the, the razor there. And then I got this um, the shaving brush as well, which is lovely. And I also got the, the dish as well. So what you do is you fill this up with hot water to start with. You drop that in there for like 30 seconds or so to let it kind of heat up and bloom and everything. Uh, and then you put a few dollops of your, um, your cream in there. This one is the power up one. They have lots of them, but they're all kind of different flavors and everything. It's the power up one, a few dollops in there. And then you just lather up and it's just a really nice experience. And also using a brush is very good because not only does it sort of lift up any facial hairs that are on there, uh, but it also kind of gives you a nice layer of lubricant right on your skin. Using foams and things aren't that good. It's basically air and alcohol that you're putting on your face, which doesn't do anything. If anything, it dries you out. So doing a proper lather and taking your time with it, um, it's just a really nice experience and actually, you know, when you get busy and you've got lots of things to do and, you know, maybe you've got, you know, a, a dog like I have or my wife or I've got work to get done or something, it's nice to have 10 minutes in the bathroom where you're like, this is just me, me and my razor and my mirror. I'm just going to take my time and, you know, and chill. So um, I'm actually very much enjoying shaving again. And for a long time, I haven't. Um, I've really kind of just got through it. So um, investing in something nice and taking my time with it has made a big difference to me. I have two pairs of shoes to talk about and actually they're both Adidas. So let me show you them both at the same time. Um, these I've had for a very long time. They are Adidas Gazelles. They are blue suede with white detailing. And actually I might get some toothpaste on there. Toothpaste, toothbrush, clean that right up um, because they're, you know, looking a bit dirty now. But I love these and I don't think I've ever talked about them. I just think they are a wicked, really easy pair of shoes to wear. Um, I am usually wearing these with my jeans rolled up a bit, so I've got a bit of ankle on show and those sort of no-show socks. I'm wearing them with white jeans today, as you can see, but also work good with, with loads of other stuff. I've actually also worn them a lot with trousers if I want a, a more casual vibe. You know that my look at the moment is kind of quite 50s. I go for trousers and a t-shirt tucked in. Can look quite smart. Rocking a pair of these actually just makes, you know, makes the whole thing dressed down a bit, also super comfy, and then blue and white, you can't go wrong with. The other pair are these. I've worn these a lot too, and I've had a lot of questions about where these are from. Again, they're from Adidas. I will find a link and put them, I'll put it down there because these are actually skateboard shoes, but they're really not, are they? I mean, they are, but you don't have to wear them on your skateboard. Um, they have kind of like the red and black detailing here and then a yellow sole, which is what I really liked about them. <laughs> I don't know why. I just think walking along and people sort of seeing your, your yellow soles, you're walking. And actually, I wore these to the Aldi Polo um, not long ago. And if you, have you seen the show um, Lucifer? The guy who plays Lucifer was also there wearing the same shoes as me. So um, shout out to the devil <laughs> for rocking my same footwear. I just think they're super easy. And I wear Converse most of the time and these are just a bit different, but the same kind of. Two things to talk about, so I'll get through it quite quickly. This is a book by uh, John York. It's called Into the Woods. I read this, finished reading it about a week ago, um, and I'm reading it again already. Literally read it once and I'm reading it again. Second time I've got my notebook and my pen in hand because I'm taking notes as I go. It's all about, well, what it says on here is how stories work and why we tell them, and that is what it's all about. I've read a bunch of books about um, the structure of stories because obviously I'm writing screenplays now and I need to know how it all works, right? Um, but this is the most clear and most concise uh, and also I find the most informative. It really kind of breaks the structure of story down to, the, to a science. And the way I find when I write, there is art and science. You've got a science of the structure, which you can mess around with, don't get me wrong, but you know, your archetypal story has certain beats at certain points. He breaks that down and then kind of leaves the creativity um, you know, entirely to you. So, you, you know, you, you can kind of apply your ideas to this. I just think it's, it's really, really helpful. Um, so yeah, reading it twice on the bounce. And finally, I have a big old hold all here. This is from Aspinall and it's actually um, part of David Gandhi's um, Aerodrome collection. I adore it. It is the best hold all I've ever had. Um, just because it's so well thought out. I actually remember being on a journey, a trip uh, with David. We were in a car together driving all the way um, to France. We both had very similar holdalls and we were discussing the pros and cons of the ones we had. Um, and it seems like obviously he was dwelling on that conversation. Not I'm taking any credit for this at all. This is entirely his thing, but it seems like all the things he was talking about that his current holdall didn't have, 
are now in this. So things that I love are the fact that you've got two side pockets here. Hard to do with one hand. Um, and you can put like your footwear in there and on the other side too. One, they kind of contrast with the leather and everything gives it a bit more structure, but also just a handy compartment. No one wants to put dirty shoes in with their clean laundry, right? Um, on the inside, you've got like just a big old cavernous space, but with pockets on either side. Um, and you also have like another sort of second skin type thing. So for example, when it's done up, it's like this. However, if you fill it right to the brim and that's not quite enough room, you can undo those ones and fill up to the second skin here, like that, and you bought yourself another, what, eight inches worth of kind of girth? <laughs> um, I just think it's so clever and so handy. And also at the back here, there is another sort of zip pocket for you to put like documents or, um, or a laptop or something. And I, it's just so well thought out. And because I'm a really, specific traveler like I, ha I pack things because I travel so much now I know what I'm doing all the time and I'm always looking for more compartments and more spaces to put things and this is just really ticks a lot of boxes so yeah good work DG uh, that is it from me that's my monthly favorites done thank you very much for watching I'll put links to everything down below hope you enjoyed it and I will see you very very soon goodbye